Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Dan. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight, it's going to be a little different because we are live reacting yeah. to the Land yeah. Cruiser launch, which is happening right now. And they're watching it, and I'm not. And so they're having way more fun than I am. <laughs> yeah. Land Cruiser, new Land Cruiser, debuting Land Cruiser. as we speak. And I mean, it's so it's a GX550 underneath. Yeah. Yeah. And on top, uh, <laughs> it is a it, Toyota GX. It looks good. It, it looks good. It looks like, looks like a 60 or 62, depending on which headlights you get. Looks like uh, that gray Poupon color is neat. I like that. The gray <laughs> Yeah, it, it's good. I like um, it. Chris will soon bring up pictures so that we don't. Hey, yeah, I have the leaked images our from today. Own feed. <laughs> but I, I yeah, mean we'll, uh, the the best part that I can see is they brought back two tone roofs, which I that's um, definitely yeah, a white throwback. Roof. Mm -hmm. White roof always good. Sig Cygnus white, if I remember correctly, on those like uh, FJ forties. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. And that's um, what I'm thinking about doing the roof on my GX. Let's do it. There's been a couple of people who've done that, but not white. I've seen one white. Hmm. Maybe See, I should. A lot of, there are a couple that are black. Mm -hmm. Not bad. What is, what is it with like... Yeah, my truck's black, so I want to do white yeah, roof to make it less hot. Less <laughs> hot. So, real fast, uh, GX launch, It we basically got the dark gray one and a tan version. Here we are, Land Cruiser mm -hmm. launch. We have a dark gray and a tan with a white yeah. roof. Like, yeah. did they yeah. just swap front ends? Like, is there only two trucks? <laughs> <laughs> No, the uh, I think the 550 wasn't it, wasn't it green? Didn't they do a Nori green over trail? Well, they have that one. the The prototype that they're moving around a lot is the um, the tan, the tan mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that's what yeah. that's the one I've seen everyone have oh, a hold of. That's the one they're going to shows with. But the videos and they're showing the tan one in the video too. But they also have the Nori um, example of over trail as well because they're they have the over trail and the over trail plus. So. The prototypes, I don't know what's in the prototypes because some of them don't have everything on them yet. I don't know. I have love you been hands-on with the 550? Sorry? Chris, go ahead. Nope, you already got it. Oh, Dan, have you been... So background for the listeners who aren't yeah. watching and looking at Dan's face with the GXLR hat. But <laughs> yeah. Dan, why don't you give everybody your quick little elevator pitch about who you are and how GXOR came to be. Sure. Um, Dan Coons, uh, out of Atlanta, but I, uh, I founded GXOR and that was in July of 2016 on Facebook was the first, uh, it came about because I bought, I actually bought a GX in 2011 and, uh, it came about because I was traveling for work and otherwise, and I saw Prados elsewhere. And I was like, I always liked Prado 120s, like everybody that ever went out of the country and saw a Prado 120 and went, ooh. Um, right. And you, so, you bought a 470 initially? Yeah. So I, I in 11, I, that was right after the, the 460s came out. So the 470s were really affordable mm -hmm. and low mileage because everyone traded up, right? So I went and I found one and I was like, well, this is, it's like the same it's like office. It's the same picture. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try and get some parts for it. So I looked into it and <clears throat> called some folks and I ordered a pallet of equipment from Australia. And this all has to do with how GXOR started. Uh, and <laughs> I started being, like ordered a, a pallet of stuff and was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. And I bolted on a, an Ironman lift, a bumper. Mm -hmm. That, that that bumper's still on it, but I did that bumper and that snorkel, um, some Asphere skid plates from Israel, and some other stuff for Prado stuff, and it worked. And I was on 33s at the time, and I went off road and immediately like broke it, and I just like folded in tie rods. I had a Land Cruiser before, I had solid axle, you know, I was had a 100 too, and it was like, oops. So I learned, I I, I learned more, and I started trying to find sure. people like, okay, can I get be bigger stuff? You know, improve, upgrade, whatever. And found out there were like four other guys. And yep. they were distributed everywhere. But they had started doing the same thing. So I was like, oh, 
So um, kind of turned into a grounds, like that turned into a little group. And then we started forming an another group and it kind of grew a little bit. And then one of the guys who formed the group kind of dropped out and just bailed. And so there was nothing left. And that was like, okay. So I was like, well, come up with a name, come up with a logo. Um, GXOR was started and it was like 15 people in 2016. And then it went to 500 out of nowhere. And then it went yep. to 5,000 and then it went to 10,000. Now we're at 35,000. Good. So Reddit's Red at 14,000. I don't even know. I didn't ask Woody, but you know, I hate mud has a lot of volume. Um, oh, yeah, it's gotten big. Yeah. But and, I, yeah. So now I think the first that everybody really got GXOR in their face was when Lexus actually did their own GXOR concept. Yeah. Which was, I don't know if you had anything to do with that, but that was the game changer, you know, because people were starting to, to yeah. catch on to the fact that it's kind of a better forerunner. And then that came out and it was like, oh, wait, why are we building these? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll set that record. I was not involved with the 2019 GXOR concept. I'm 100% in support of the 2019 GXOR concept. Okay. I thought it was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. Yep. Um, I had just done a GX, a, a, a Lexus driver story, I think it was called, where they sent a Lexus crew, marketing crew out and filmed me and, and asked me questions about my journey to GXOR and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the, I went to FJ Summit. And I was, I think, in February they did the video. And then I went to FJ Summit in whatever that was, July that year. And there that was, that thing. Mm -hmm. It was like, it just appeared and I was like, what is that? And oh, that's amazing. And then I walked over to it and it had like GXOR in the wrap and the look and the, like they'd made a little GXOR logo of, of their own accord with like F Sport Blue. And it was like cool. Yeah. It was so cool. And I was just like, wow. Yeah. Uh, oh, they get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, they get it for sure. And totally cool with it. It was like CBI did a bunch of that work. Um, and Kurt, I think, orchestrated a lot of that work too. And As he does. It was, it was just awesome. <laughs> I think it was really cool. I thought it was completely, it was, I was very surprised that they did it given just like the nature of corporate Toyota, Lexus. It was like the first time they listened to the users, or the, the consumers, and it was like mm -hmm. really refreshing and nice and it felt good. So, right. Well, it, it seems like since, I mean, we know that Toyota made a big push to like revitalize their sports car side of things. But it seems yeah. like since 20, I don't know, call it 16 or 17, the company as a whole has been like TRD pro, you know, rear yeah. wheel drive sports cars. I mean, even going back to the, you know, Scion FRS, which they, which was originally, it is still the Subaru, but you know, it was a Scion and now it's Toyota right. and they're, they're really like leaning into it and, and changing mm -hmm. the, perception and that flows over like you said into lexus like people don't think about lexus as you know like a fun exciting company but again like rcf lc500 lfa you know now there's the gxor stuff and we get we're getting yeah. lockers on the on the 550 you know the 550 like the transition because there was like this period right like 2019 they did the concept and the 460s were, they came out with the, um, the off-road package, which was like a driver assist right. computer that allowed you to get like a 360 and the ground monitor and stuff. Yeah. And then, um, and that was cool. Like it was very cool. Cause it also came with like cool. MTS, crawl control, all those different things. But then like they, they went into this like period where it's like sports cars. Like you were saying like the LC 500, the RCFs, they put out the GSF for a couple years before that, um, oh, but now the IS five hundred oh. and all these all these cars, and then this thing, the GX five fifty, like, whoa, like yeah. <laughs> new world. It's a new world. Yeah, they took out the third row just so you had more room for gear to go off road. It's great. Love it. <laughs> yeah, you get one. I did leave kids behind with no third row. That's just me, though. I'm very, I'm a, I'm a niche market with six totals. So. That's, <laughs> I mean, I'm, 
I'm eventually going to get one, but I, I think I'll probably work with, you know, the see if I get a chance to drive one without having to buy one first. And then, uh, highly recommend. There. So, yeah, we have some, we have some things we're working on here. Cool. So. Cool. So, how'd you get started in off roading? Well, um, the first car I ever wanted was a Jeep that I couldn't have. And <laughs> so, I ended up with, as I, this is like a common story to everybody, right? My first car, yeah, I wanted a Jeep. What'd you get? I got a Cavalier. Um, yes. A four-door <laughs> K-car Cavalier that blew smoke if you went over 55. So oh. um, I always wanted I always wanted an off-road truck. And after I graduated from college, got a job, and was able to actually do something about it, I got a Land Cruiser. So my first off-road vehicle was a, uh, a 1980 two maybe is 82 fj60 okay and but from there i like i joined tlca um got involved with local chapter uh progressed from a 60 that was stock to i bought an fj55 and i lifted it Mm -hmm. and then i progressed to 80s and then i uh moved into a 100 and then i ended up finding the gx and i Mm -hmm. wheeled the whole time i was over playing around back in the day and um if anybody was in the tennessee area and off-roaded a lot or heard of it teleco oh um, i remember teleco yeah so i spent a lot of time at teleco on uh various vehicles mm-hmm. and broke many things but it was a great time and once i started it was like the land cruiser thing segued over but logically just like yeah. it just segued back to the land cruiser i guess but uh yeah that's how I got started. You skipped the 200. And went I to skipped the, GX. the 200. Um, I did. I I got into the GX before. Honestly, I like, I like a GX 470 off-road better yeah. than a 200. 200 is a real big. They're, They're wide. Yeah. How was, how was the 55? It's horrible. It's wonderful. <laughs> it was like... It was like every time you went off road, you had the most fun ever breaking your arms because it was it was like manual steering. Um, yeah. yeah. So mine was it was one thirty threes. What? Yeah, it was on thirty threes lifted with sliders and stuff, but it had manual steering. So oh you'd sit God. there and you're strong arming over top of stuff, and it was open, open, so, and it was manual four speed. So I was just like trying to steer with one hand and shift and it was like yeah. every time you're like wow oh, i got thrown across the bench seat in the front when you hit a rock it was great I had a fun. that's like your year's workout every time you go in the woods you know how much i learned about off-roading though i I, yeah. I highly suggest like open open manual like horrible experience like my <laughs> hands were sore like you come back and you're like your arms are physically sore and you have bruises from being chucked around in the cabin <laughs> oh man that's great like, wrestling an angry dog yeah oh, that's so fantastic. an angry pig <laughs> angry pig yeah oh man so you've uh you mentioned fj summit so yeah. we, know, we know you've done the, the trails out in colorado where yeah. else have you gone uh in your off-road travels other than there in teleco and uh and also tell us about the rubicon yeah did that um I've been a lot of places. I've been through like Tempsey and um, in Texas, uh, did like Hot Springs and Arkansas, uh, all the parks in the southeast. So Yawari and Wind Rock, and there's a place called the Cove, which is a little bit off the beaten path. And I won't talk too much about where it is because it's amazing. Is, does uh, that have a waterfall you can park under? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I think I'm very familiar with this. You guys can can, can continue that conversation later. Yeah, yeah. I've done a lot southeast through the midsection of our lovely country out west, Colorado, obviously, Utah, Moab. Um, And then the Rubicon is the furthest west that I've been to wheel. But that was that trip was that was a long trip. So I I started I called it my um, my 10, 20, 30. And I promised I'm going to write like an article or a book about it. So basically I did um, the the 10th FJ Summit. And then I went to, I think it was the FJ Summit. Then I went to like the 20th um, Cruise Moab. 
And then the 30th, um, Rubicon. Oh my gosh. That was all one all trip? In the same year. Yeah. In the so, same year? Oh, man. yeah. So that's, it was wild. That's what? So I did, yeah. So I, I went to these events. Just in road tripping? Or was it G Spinner? I can't remember. It may have been. I can't remember because Cruise Moab was definitely 20 years now, right? And then I know Rubicon was 30. Oh, Maybe it was G Spinner. But anyway, I had three events in one year across the country, and I had to move myself from here in Georgia to the, the middle to go to Cruise Moab. Then I had to get out to the Rubicon, and I broke um, – this is earlier in, the, in my build story, so I didn't have the bigger stuff yet. So oh. I broke in Moab, and then I left my truck there. And I ordered a bunch of parts to fix it at a shop. And then I went to FJ <laughs> Summit when I got fixed by flying back oh, and picking no, it up. Man. And then when I picked it up, I, I restaged and planned for Rubicon. And then that's about, let me see, that's about the size of my truck when I did the Rubicon. Right there. That, that's, 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 that's actually at, um, that's right off of Yankee Boy near the entrance to Governor Basin in Ure. Okay. So, and, uh, so you did the Rubicon on what? 35s and locked front and rear? 35s, locked front and rear. Uh, I did have the diamond axle at that time, so I had a nine and a half Land Cruiser diff in the back. So okay. a little bit stronger. Stock steering yep. rack, cracked the steering rack in half. Um, Oops. But not until I got, I was able to drive it. It wasn't leaking. I don't know how that works, but it was like <laughs> cracked. It wasn't cracked this way in half. It was cracked, oh, cracked this through. Oh, yeah. really? It was like cracked vertically across it. So the actual aluminum housing was was broken, but it was still held together. That so is it did leak, and I got home. But um, yeah, that was that was on. I was on a tree. That's a tree on the left. Um, <laughs> There's rocks everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. stuck on the tree. That's a little camera. Yeah, it was, I, I wasn't. I was aiming for the tree. I just missed. But. Uh, yeah, that was that was a heck of a trip. That was hard. I, I highly encourage everyone to go to the Rubicon. That's God. That's a lot. That's a that's a lot. But of a make sure you go with someone. Don't go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't. 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 I don't know. We do no not go alone. Let the record show. It, it's it was easier than I thought, and it was so much harder than I thought as well. Because like little sluice, um, yeah. the decision tree, big sluice. All those things you hear these words and you're like, oh yeah, 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 and you get there and there is like a boulder the size of your car on either side of a tree, mm-hmm. and then you're like, now I know why they call that decision tree. <laughs> well, what everybody, go, what I've been hearing recently from people who have done the Rubicon on like, it's a tree, fours, thirty fives. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, that's not what that tire was supposed to <laughs> that, go. That's not decision tree. That's bad choice tree. That's, that's bad yeah, choice tree. That's. That looks like tire slipped off tree. Yeah. Um, it was a bad, yeah. bad line tree. <laughs> bad, bad line tree. How <laughs> many trees could you say that about around the country? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, people always say that like the Rubicon, the difficulty of some of the obstacle obstacles isn't necessarily as hard as they expected, but it just never stops. Like you don't yeah. have down time. It's exhausting. You wheel like I went in. I actually went in from uh, down Cadillac Hill, so oh, I went in that. I went in instead of going through Loom, mm-hmm. so I ended up in Rubicon Springs, and it was like very different because you you have a different. No matter how you run the Rubicon matters, because if you run it like the traditional way, it's one experience. If you run it mm-hmm. the other way, it's different and yeah. arguably harder. Um, <laughs> But it also depends year to year what happens because if it's, it was under like twenty feet of snow, like there's still snow there now. Right. Yeah. So when that snowpack melts and it moves everything, then you got to see what happened because there's there's boulders that move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, that keeps it interesting. Like a line is yeah. never the same year after year. I can't wait to go back with our trucks the way they are now. So yeah, so. That's, What's the story with your current GX garage? So we just talked about the 470. Yeah, I have uh, currently between my wife and I, I have my 470 that's RCLT front, 200 series steering rack, diamond rear, 
locks, all this, all the jazz, like everything you could possibly do to it. She has uh, the comp- the mechanical twin. So she has RCLT, 37s, rear diamond, lockers, all the jazz, but she has it, her own touches. So she made different choices on bumpers and colors and pink, she okay. wants pink. So she's got a pink GX 470. Hell yeah. Um, Pink accents with gray and white. It looks awesome. It looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, it um, is one of a kind. We'll... Oh, you have one? Yeah, there you go. So, you know, so we have the same capability, so we can go everywhere together, which is cool. And then That's beyond awesome. her truck, she also owns that orange. You can see the hint of it in the back. Tidy. There's a BJ60 back there. Oh, man. That's that's her truck that she imported from Canada. So that's a uh, Canadian spec the G badged BJ60. Oh, wow. Um, and then we have a 22 Nori Green Black Line GX 460. Um, and then we have her 97 uh, Rest of the World hacked uh, Porsche Boxster that she buzzes around in. Nice. So we, we got rid of all the O2 and all that junk because we live in Georgia. It's, it's a 97, so it's, yep. it's legal. Yep. Um, and then my I have... Technically, I have two more GXs, but my sons drive those. <laughs> you covered a lot of the uh, a lot of the bases there. <laughs> yeah. so, I also have a South African bush trailer that we use, which is pretty oh, cool. You, Conquer 440. You ever hear of a Conquer 440? Have not, but Chris. Yeah, can. that's cool. I have. I, I live in nerdy off-road trailer land because I, I want one, but I don't have one yeah. yet. Can you pull so we have one of those, trailer? and I tow it. Honestly, I tow that thing with my 470 on 37s. So it can actually, it has trailing arms that are independent with Fox shocks and it can go everywhere we go. And, but it has like heat, air, full kitchen and fridge, oh my God. two queen beds that pop out. It's like super, super. It's like your overland geek mode. That's like, <gasps> that is it's, candy. it's overland candy. Overland candy. Watch this. What's the name of a documentary. Did I get it right? Yeah, that's it. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that thing unfolds with 360 awnings and you get like 400, it's like 250, 300 square foot of under awning. And then you have the whole inside that folds out, two queen beds. Um, like the whole front end is full of like propane water pumps and uh, generator, like whatever. What is it called? It's Conqueror? Just... Conqueror UEV 440 Extreme. Extreme. <laughs> 300 square feet. It's, it's got an elephant on it, so clearly New York City it's ready for whatever apartment. <laughs> that's right. Awesome. Okay, yeah, that's really cool. Um, so that's the herd of I used herd for elephant, but um, that's that's what we got. That's the fleet. Does the trailer have matching wheels and tires to the 470? It won't fit. They, they, it has 33s. That's the biggest you can put on there. And I put, um, I did put Land Cruiser. They are six lug and they are Toyota wheels. So they're Land Cruiser wheels. I think they're actually FJ wheels, uh, Steelys. Nice. So, and like I could technically put those on the truck. Right. I'd just be a little bit. Can't put the truck wheels yeah, on. Yeah, there you go. There's, the it's deployed. On. Holy shit. Deployed. <laughs> Tactical, so, man. We're, we're going to talk a lot more in the future, Dan, because I have a crap ton of kids that are getting older and uh, GXs are super cheap used. So uh, <laughs> that's why it, that's actually why I think that's honestly why it grew. Um, I think the price of entry, like people don't think of a Lexus as something you can afford to go off roading in. Like that's yeah. that's kind of an anti pattern to me in general. Right. Um, but it's true. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> we. we Years ago, my my wife will still yell at me because the the truck that she loved the most was her V eight four point seven liter powered four runner that she had. So to oh, get back nice. into something like that would be would be ideal. It's the same truck. So the right? limited the limited V eight four runner all wheel drive is exactly the same drivetrain except for one thing. It has a two prong actuator on the transfer case because it's electric. Versus the GX, which has a manual. So the Lexus is better than the Toyota because it's less electric. Right. It's the manual. Like, thing. What is, does that even make sense? No, not at all. Not, not in that era of Lexus and Toyota. Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. 
Or are you just doing That's FJ, true. just do an FJ transfer case swap and eliminate yeah, you that variables. Too. You can bolt it. Yeah, you can bolt up a transfer case. You can swap out the whole. I mean, it's crazy what you can do, and they're interchangeable. Like you can run fifth gen CVs, which is in an good, O3 GX. Those things are like you can get four hundred <laughs> parts everywhere, anywhere, yeah. and like not that expensive too. Yeah. But a base, you know, if you go in and get a TRD Pro 4 runner, it's more expensive than a GX. Dude, so I bought my <laughs> GX. I bought my GX in Chris, when was it? The fall of twenty fall of twenty one, maybe? I mean this politely, but it is yeah, hard to remember yeah. dates and vehicles with you. I can't even yeah. So <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, Which, to be honest, the GX has been around the longest, right? Like, I haven't. Yeah, I've only owned one vehicle longer than the GX in the last seven or eight years. Which was the Avalanche? Uh, I haven't owned the Avalanche technically since 2013. But you knew somebody who owned it the whole time. Yes. <laughs> so when did you join GXOR? Was that? When did you join GXOR? Have you owned your GX so long? I want to. I want to say Probably before it, I bought it. It was 2021. Okay, so when I bought you got it in 2021, yours. and I ended up that buying the GX because a CPO truck was significantly less expensive than a CPO. Yeah. I was trying to get into another fifth gen four runner, and it was like. 5,500 bucks to 7,500 bucks more for comparable miles and age, you know? So, but here's what's crazy is like GXs. So I'm, I'll tell you what, I'll disclose what I paid for my GX as a special treat because I don't typically talk about it, but I bought it in 2011, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And it was, it was the truck of an ATF agent who bought it in Guam. Huh. There's a Lexus dealership in Guam, by the way. That's Guam awesome. Guam is actually a very active, large chapter of GXOR because there's a dealership in Guam. That's so but interesting. This dude imported it to Vancouver and then lived there and his wife drove it. And then they brought it to Atlanta when he transferred again. And I bought it from him. And it was like, again, it was like 2011. So this truck's like seven, almost eight years old. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. I haven't caught on it. It had 96,000 miles on it. In 2011, think about what that would go for today. I paid 16. It's like I mean, 45. <laughs> like it's, like it. I paid 16 for a seven year old truck with yeah. less than 100,000 miles on it back then. And that was like, because they were, they were much more expensive then. They've yeah. gotten less expensive now. Right. So, that's, yeah. that's of course, age and blah, blah, blah. But, and now it has, I was like happy. You're into a 3X with parts and upgrades. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I keep a spreadsheet. Yeah. I keep a spreadsheet of all the shit, and I have the cell that totals it hidden. So I can't. No, I, delete, I deleted that. I <laughs> See, that I, I have the maintenance spreadsheet, but I don't put price on anything. Uh, like, I, I, I know what I've done. I'm yeah. not recording how much I've spent. My <laughs> maintenance spreadsheet's right here. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to write anything down anymore. Ugh. Oh. I just know who I buy stuff from. I'm like, oh, I need another one of those. Ugh. Right. So we're the only, as, as far as I know, we're the only people that have two RCLTs in the same family. Okay. So uh, maybe inside Marlin, somebody, two in the same family? Nobody really. No. Big Mike, I talked to him. I don't think the, for, the first 460 is on the rack out there right now. Hmm. So, but no other, I don't know of anybody else that's done two in the same family. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, they that just was kind of wild pumping those out for the fifth gen for the 400. So now, now that they're coming yeah. out for the 460, man, it is going to be game changer. Like, what's well, the same kit? They just never tried yeah. it. So, they had the 200 series rack, they were worried about clearance on the pan, but the pan on the 460 is relatively close for oddly close to the, um, the V6 and the four and the forerunner. Mm -hmm. So their clearances doesn't seem to be an issue. So that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, Jeff, Jeff's the guy doing it. He's one of the mods in GXOR. So we'll find oh, out shortly. Oh yeah. man. How much width does the RCLT add? Um, 
So we, WMS to WMS, I know this extremely well. It might be a good segue. <laughs> no, that's not a good segue. But uh, the, the width is 2.75 inches for the long travel portion. So your, your actual or per side. Wheel, mounting, wheel mounting to wheel mounting surface is 2.75 on each side. So you get about okay. five and a half. So probably still narrower than a 200 or just right about at it. It's like I'm on... I'm on 1250s, 37 1250s, um, and I think mine's like 82. Okay. That's, yeah, that's like right that's there. That's barely, like my stock Sequoia is 80. Yep. So like that's yeah. super reasonable. Yep. Yeah, it's it's not extra wide. I don't need like Raptor lights or any kind of craziness. So it's an, it's a moderate, I think it's a, it's a rock crawling long travel. So it's not like a three and a half inch pre-runner right. desert thing. Um, but it does like the design was in, intended to move, like keep all your stock pivots and joints and stuff in the same orientation. So you can still align it. You can still, you know, run it like a normal truck yeah. and, and it's daily driver, you know, on the road, it's like smooth as caddy. But when you get in the rocks, um, it has really cool geometry so that your CVs will tuck into the arms a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get a little more flex. Right. And, and it's, it's strong. It's just strong, but it's not overly large. It's not, it's, it's amazing, first of all, but you get the, yeah. the upgrade of the steering alone is worth it. Right. But it, it doesn't look silly like a team mm -hmm. on top, like, you know? Doesn't look like Superman. Yeah. Right. Do you know how much up and down travel you have with it? Um, I did. I don't right now. <laughs> it's written out <laughs> somewhere on the forums. I'm yeah, sure. it's in that spreadsheet. I deleted, but no, it's um. So I mean, there is a couple of pictures. I actually posted a couple of pictures of it of flexing. So the rear, the rear has long travel with the diamond and stuff. So I mean, and I have hydro bumps on all four corners. Mm -hmm. So it does. I don't have sway bars, and I tow with no sway bars yeah. because the hydro bumps are set to engage and balance the truck before it gets too leany so mm -hmm. it'll lean but it won't lean past the point because the hydros catch it you have uh, so you have uh hkdss <laughs> yeah kind of, yeah so, <laughs> kind of and then the the actual travel of the suspension itself i mean it it, it moves like you know it'll, it'll crawl it's impressive there, there are some pictures out there of it of it flexed out it's worth it's it's very expensive but it's very mm -hmm. worth it like here you can see like it's obviously, it's all stock bolts to the stock spots on the frame. The upper control arms go in yep. the stock spots in the frame. Bolt goes through normal. That's awesome. The spindle upper control arms. It's a typical Toyota thing, but it's just a little bit more, a little beefier. Yeah, just got science behind it so that you're not... Yeah, there's a whole lot of science. Crazy CV it. angles. Like, yeah, yeah and the RCVs that Holy don't shit. break. That is... Um, and then I have lots of... Stuff extra i don't know i i went i i don't have i don't really have a need for a secondary that big with an internal bump and another reservoir but it looks cool um if i go really really fast it helps yeah um i don't really ever go that fast these trucks aren't that fast when they're on stock highway tires <laughs> well it's actually that's really not slow that truck is fast really yeah I have, a, I have the headers and the open exhaust. It's like two and a half to three inch exhaust with, I mean, it's quick. Wait, it, it'll go. The Doug Thorley headers? Yeah, yeah. Mm, the ones well, that are out of honestly, stock for me always. You know what sounds ridiculous? The suspension is the most useful on the freaking highway. Really? When you drive, have you, when was the last time you drove across Route 40? I-40 going 40. west. Oh, I forty I, going west. I've never. Been. I, I live twenty by 70, going through so. Mississippi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I twenty going through Mississippi. I forty going anywhere on I forty, and I seventy is okay. But if you go down to I ten as well, it's like you're basically on a a, a blue trail on the oh, interstate because <laughs> the the semis and the trade have torn it up, and the weather, the hurricanes and stuff. Like anybody listening to this, if they know what I'm, they're like, oh yeah. Yeah, that's it. Those are those are, but yeah, that's funny. That's so interesting. Which that's it's funny you say it like that because I we drove 
I-90 when I was like 15. And all I remember for all of South Dakota was the seams in the road. The dunk, the dunk, the dunk, like just hours and hours of that crap. Yeah. We did it two years ago. It's glass smooth now. So like, yeah. I don't know. You can literally catch air on I-20. What? Yeah, there no, are bridges. <laughs> no, there, there are bridges where you can literally you can launch off the bridge and and like in my truck, like my truck has a lot of movement, right? It can absorb yeah. a lot. It was actually like like whoo, not good, not good. So, uh, awesome. Speaking of going, what else past, you got? Which uh, <laughs> is your wife doing the rebel rally in the in her she truck? Is. Yes, she is. That's primarily what I've been doing aside from, you know, doing the day-to-day work stuff is prepping the truck and supporting her in terms of like fundraising. Um, GXWire.org still has, we stopped all our sponsorship stuff, but we still have a little link there if you want to donate. But um, we prepped the truck, um, got it through. We have to add um, the security, not security, but the safety stuff. Mm -hmm. So we had to put fire extinguishers, recovery gear, mounts for shovels, uh, max tracks, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she had to get a, um, a compliant rally trip computer. Yep. So she's team 143 with her partner, Nancy, and they have been training. Like they're, they've been doing all the hard work I'm doing. Like I get to play with trucks and upgrade stuff. And like, I've never played around with a Terra trip before, but it's a, a old school rally computer mm-hmm. has like, calibrated speed off of either a magnetic pickup that you install down at your wheel and it like detects your stud going by and you mm-hmm. calibrate it or um yeah there you go and um and then it like takes it and says okay here's your split time here's your distance and it can do that off right. of a non-gps based because this is them in wyoming they were just out they flew out to denver and drove up to wyoming and like buried trucks in sand to get recovery out of the way and dead reckoning in the dunes because it's hard to, to yeah. do that because you can't see anything so you have to kind of get your bearing and figure yeah. out what's going on this was their um instruct instructor who many people knows daniel markowski but um he helped them learn a little bit about recovery techniques and and safety and stuff and then that's nancy's uh, gx back there that's my wife on the right that's nancy they're doing uh i don't even know what that is it's a, it looks like a geo marker yeah, like the US Geologic Survey mark or something. But they were doing um, like but you have to do so the Rebel Rally is like hard. So you don't have GPS. Yep. You don't have electronics. You're not allowed to have anything that can show you where you are. Mm-hmm. So they tape off your mirror. Like you can't have north, south, east, west on your mirror, for example. Mm-hmm. If you have yeah. a nav, they do like t- anti tamper tape on it. Yeah. Like they, they shut you down so you can't use anything. And you basically get like a paper map for the a paper map booklet for the day that shows like you're going to use this map for coordinates and waypoints. And then this map, they'll, they'll dump on you some point a book. Then you have to all of a sudden switch to enduro mode and do like full on rally calls. Right. But you have no electronics to know whether the heck you are. So if you're doing rally calls, you're doing it off of, you know, a, basically a calibrated rally computer to say, go this many kilometers this direction and then turn right. And then figure out if you get to where they want you to by the end of the book. And if you don't, yeah. you lose points. And if you right. go and stop at waypoints along the way, like not the enduro part, but the normal part, you plot out your route for the day and you have to go over there and be like, I, I see the green flag. So, yay, I got the, the, the easy one. Yeah. Oh, there's a harder one. Let's go for more points. It's blue. The flag's like three feet tall. Yeah. So you can't, may not be able to see it. So you have to get closer and then you go get that one. And then there are black uh, waypoints that have no marker. And you don't find out if you got close until you. Yep. And the beacon, the little beacon thing is what they track. And then they have a beacon on your car. So they know where you are, but you do not. And you can also go and find out where you are, but it's points. Right. We've had, uh, we've had probably. I, Chris had three or four different teams yeah, of, of women on yeah close to yeah, 10 all different that. rebel rally participants yeah. on our show and it's it, crazy every time I... that we have them on and they talk about it it just sounds like it's 
like harder and harder. It gets it harder it every time they explain it. Yeah. It doesn't sound like anything is making it easier. It's just like it, there's so many right. variables and it sounds so it's hard. immersive We've, and like a complete reframing of your brain from, you know, I'm, imp- I'm impressed. I can't imagine. I'm impressed. And the fact that it's so long, it's, tw- it's so long. It's the longest <laughs> navigation race in North America. That yeah. Too. It's longer than the Baja 1000. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so they're out there for, like, what? Think about that. Like, everything I just said for 250 kilometers or 300 yeah. kilometers a day. Not that Baja do that for a week. Easy, but it makes Baja sound easy because you have everything available to you. It's just go fast that way. That's yeah, Baja. Set go fast your own pace. Way. Don't crash. Yeah. You know, right? Like, this is don't crash and set your own pace and figure out every oh. single step. And and it's not that easy either because you can't. You can't cra- – like crashing is not really – you have to go according to what you said. Right. So it's not It's not just like go fast and take chances, right? It's like I will proceed from this waypoint to that waypoint at this rate. Therefore, I will arrive at this time. Yeah. 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 And, and you get penalized if you speed. It's the ultimate time like, speed distance. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm impressed that one, like it's, it's become what it is. It's awesome. It is Two that, you know, the opportunity, the thing that I think is most impressive is that they, they have this motto and, and my wife reminded me the other day, they say, you can race in the, with the car in your driveway. And, and it's like the daily driver that you go on a trail with, like she has, and obviously it's, it's, it is a daily driver. She can drive it every day, go on the highway, it's licensed and whatever, all the regulations, but like to do that and go out there and have the experience of essentially having like the it's the car level experience because yeah. it's like the big equipment and crew and experience and yeah. moving city sort of vibe. And there's a awesome. there's a stock class too, like for yeah. vehicles that are unmodified and manufacturers participate too. So it's not like this is inaccessible. Yeah. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's a good showing, and you got to keep us up. My to- day. On how she does. They, uh, they, uh, they allowed 37 12 50s this year. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, have mercy if they need to, you know, swap one. That's, oh, God. That's a lot of time. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I figured out her like wheel and tire weighs as much as she does. That's, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I, was, dude, I am obsessing over tire weights these days just because like every pound counts. For gas mileage you know and unsprung weight is enormous but like even my i got i have 285 70s and like i'm at like 90 yeah. pounds for a wheel and tire you know and that's not even really? that. that's nothing <laughs> minor um and like the bead locks that we run are like i think they're like 36 pounds <laughs> yeah but the the tires we run are stupid yeah, they're heavy yeah. Like over 100 pounds. I know. Last but, week? Um, yes. Oh, my God. Chris, was that last week we were talking to Tate about the about the trail tractor yeah, tires or whatever? And they were like on an 275 pounds each or something. FJ62? Yeah. Yeah. 44s are big. Yeah. Right? He's, that's big. Yeah, that's... That's like Arctic truck. Right? <laughs> Oh man, that would be a great rebel rally rig because you just go like yeah. full float over the sand. <laughs> they Not don't want allowed. you to float. Too big a tire. That's understandable. So it would be a yeah. good dune cruise. Well, the other thing is like you were talking about yours and your mileage. It's like the other thing that a lot of people don't realize about GXs is, is that if you if you spend the time and obviously there's investment, but um, if you regear them and you catch up on maintenance and you spend and you stick with it mm-hmm. and you really, really grind into it. I, I, I don't get bad gas mileage for what I've got. Yep. Like I tow, I tow at 10 and I can cruise on the highway about 14, 15 that's without, a, without a trailer. That's very good. So the couple of that, the fact that I've got the prototype tank that they created the LRA for oh the God. GX with, mm-hmm. I have, I have 55 gallons of Dude, gas. Your, your bladder is gas. your limiting factor. Like, Oh boy! So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a biological timer. Who'd you work with, Chris? 
out at Long Ridge? Well, this was so yeah. the Cruiser Brothers brought him in when Ward was back involved with LRA, Ward, and right. then we we were shipping. So they, sh I actually was. So okay, I was I, I was in California, and I dropped my truck because I wanted the Nomad valve body. We can do some more truck stuff, techie. So the Nomad. I will tell you this: I'm not in any way, shape, or form supported or, or sponsored by this company. Western Australian transmission. They have this thing that is make them for 80s, they have them for uh, hundreds, they have them for GXs. They're, it's called a Nomad HD valve body, and it basically takes the American transmission and changes the pressures inside the transmission so that it shifts like a truck. Huh. So you get a longer a longer first gear, a longer second gear, you can actually accelerate and use all the way up to about 3,500 RPM before mm -hmm. it, it shifts. So you get more power for the time that you spend in a particular gear, yep. which translates to more power equals more efficiency right. in, in the end. Because right. you're not dropping and, and bogging up to the, the RPM band again when you're shifting early, like yep. our soft, I'll call it our soft transmission speed. Um, it also affords you the addition of a torque converter lockup button Ooh. So when you're on the highway, like when I tow or I'm on the highway for a long period, you hit the torque converter lockup and then you immediately stop spinning your ATF. Yep. You see a temperature. And you have a physical connection down. and your temp your ATF temps drop. Towing is amazing because you don't have to worry about it. Mm. And you basically, it, it's like a, a really good way to handle the power of it, but also distribute the power properly and manage it better. Mm. So that's a really cool that's a really cool little object there. But that that led to a whole conversation of, I'm going to install that. Cruiser Brothers installs those. Okay, I'll bring my truck out. Well, we also are working with LRA. I was like, oh, okay, let's, you know. Yeah. Oh, but that doesn't fit because your charcoal canister is in the way in the U.S. Okay, well, we'll cut it, send it back to Australia. <laughs> They'll re refab it to fit and then ship it back and then we'll install it in your truck. Oh, my and God. And then... You can come back out, pick it up, and then go run the Rubicon. Untested. Untested. So that's exactly what I did. So I went with a new valve body, new fuel tank. They actually welded some armor on it just because they thought I was going to drag it. I only hit it once. Um, but it was awesome because I drove from um, Cruiser Brothers. It was a couple hours from uh, the Lake Tahoe. I drove from there to Lake Tahoe, camped. Did the Rubicon, did all the Rubathon events, Good Lord. and then drove out, and then drove to Reno, Nevada on one tank of gas. Jesus. Oh, my God. That's, yeah, that's crazy. What's the, I mean, 55 gallons of gas at eight gallons, that's, by the, that's an enormous difference in vehicle weight between a start, between full and empty. Yeah, progressive springs are required. Yes. <laughs> that's funny. Never think about that. So I have... I have the first set of Dobinson 849 springs, mm. which is a progressive spring that's long travel, but it can support um, 1,000 to 1,200 pounds over stock static. Oh my God. And still be progressive beyond that. So for every inch down, it takes progressively yeah. more weight to get it. So mm. I actually can tow, the trailer has almost a 700 pound tow uh, tongue weight. Mm -hmm. That's so a I can fill my tank. Way. I have a full drawer full of tools, a fridge full of stuff, and put the trailer on it, and it'll sit basically a little bit below. Oh man, it's static height. That's crazy. That's uh, yeah. I mean, in the UTV world, everybody runs progressive for door rate, and like yeah. people out east science, get science too much into progressive science rules. Into science, the, yeah. Science, man. Fucking crazy. And I, math so, uh, and science, it's your friend. So what is what haven't you upgraded on your truck? <laughs> uh, the engine. Okay. Yeah. Keep that the way it is. <laughs> I mean, so I've, no. I've done hmm, yeah, I've pretty much touched everything. I've I've hacked into my VSC computer so I can turn it off at will, uh, but nothing else. So I can hit a switch and it'll just light up VSC so I don't get that death beep when I go in corners sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, race radiator. It's got a Koyorad race radiator. Um, I've changed 
Yeah, a lot. Uh, chargings all from an Australian HKBE mm -hmm. charging thing. I've done, you know, it's got a twin air inside. It's got dual batteries yep. um, from off-grid engineering out of Colorado. Um, you have a factory yeah, trans cooler on that? Just thinking about the towing. No, I've got um, that Western. I got another watt auxiliary cooler because mm -hmm. the Koyo Rad radiator doesn't have a cooler in it. So you have to put a trans cooler on yeah. because you lose it. So you have to do another loop gotcha. and add a cooler. Okay. Yeah. We're, we've been talking about the trans cooler situation with four sixties a lot lately. And it's same thing. You gotta. Just... We're doing it's, it's an easy, that's actually a really easy low cost mod that allows you to have a lot more reliability because I mean, transmissions heat up a lot. And I honestly, I, I do this more times than you think when you go off road, what gear are you in? When you go out with a group, what gear are you in? And invariably, there's a large number of people who yeah. are talking a lot of smack on the internet who are sitting there in drive. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and you don't have an you don't have an extra cooler? Like, you better flush your transmission, buddy, because yeah. like you need to, you have to drive your car the way it needs to be driven in the situation you're in, and that means you have to learn it. Yep. And a lot of people are new to, like, this is another aspect of GXOR I think is interesting. 40%, I did this number just to have you, 40% of GXOR, 35,000 people, 40% have never gone off road and never built a truck. Huh. I mean, I believe. It's not that surprising, but that's a big number. That was a big number. But now they're exposed to it and they're more likely to, right. which is good. Exactly. That's what we want. So, um, I got, you yeah, absolutely to drop please. a couple of, I'm working on some stuff. Do it. Yeah. Let's hear it. So, um, I'm working with a distributor, Lexus distributor down here, and we are going to be building a black line. So, but we're going to be building black line. Remember at SEMA last year, they announced the AAP program. The, uh, it's the um, associated associate accessories program through the Toyota and Lexus dealerships. Yes, I vaguely so, remember that. Yeah, so vaguely. So he, let me uh, bring it to top of mind, especially given recent announcements. This is important. Mm. Everybody, pay attention. This is why it's a drop. <clears throat> okay. So aftermarket providers of accessories, Prince is enrolled. ARB is enrolled. Dometic is enrolled. Mm -hmm. More are coming. Bilstein enrolled. ARB by proxy, Old Man Emu, yeah. right? So the catalog is developing AAP on the Toyota and Lexus side. They also have really cool dog stuff. Like they have like dog harnesses and barriers yeah. and all kinds yeah. of stuff. It's awesome. And the camping gear, they have boxes, all the accessories, right? The AAP program means that you can go to your dealer, local dealer, and say, I would like a brand new GX 550, please, with a lift, right. 35, <laughs> a roof rack, a fridge, uh, everything, right? Yeah. And you can order those parts through the dealer, through AAP, and then, this is the part that cinches the deal. It's like, oh, why would I do that? They're going to mark it up, right? Except it's not that marked up. And you finance it as part of the new vehicle purchase. Why? It goes under the VIN as part of a vehicle, which means it's insured as yep. the purchase price for your does finance it, value. Does it maintain factory So you just too? insured your built truck. Yep. See that? That's the, the other caveat that absolutely matters. Yes. There. That's clutch. And that's... that's... Yeah. Yeah, it maintains the factory warranty as per any modification. So you don't violate your factory right. warranty to put a lift on it. They just won't right. ensure the function of the shock if it fails. Right. So if you put an aftermarket, if I put an icon or a king or anybody's shock on my truck um, and it fails and I was under warranty, they just won't warranty that shock. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, AP, think about what we just saw in the Land Cruiser, guys. Yeah, this so this concept like Mopar has been doing this for yeah. ten years probably with Jeep stuff, but it's like it's a no brainer because they can make a little extra money. All it takes is some some legal stuff and you know some underwriting stuff on the insuring side, and then train your like the techs yeah. who are putting this stuff on the trucks. 
I can guarantee <laughs> are going to enjoy that more than they are doing oil changes on another RX three. That's what I'm saying. You know, and, and think about like Lexus too, not just off road. Imagine being able to AAP um, yeah. like stabilizers and better performance shocks and wheels and tires for the F series and being able to, you know, the GX 550, obviously you can take an over trail and be like, I would like that to be taller, please. Yep. And, and, and you do all that through factory and the, you know, the I think they announced the 550 pricing now. It's like, I think the baseline that, over what? trail was like, That's it? I think I saw something said like 75. Yeah. That seems about yeah. in line with what we expected. I mean, I got a well, the baseline here GX four sixty right now. You can get a baseline, a base four sixty. You can get a black line for under like at sixty grand. Yep, I, and I got it's a like fifty nine sixty yeah. grand. And the uh, new cruiser is like I, mid I'm typing, but it cat cat motions. <laughs> I must confirm. But the four sixty, like I, I was just posting about this today, like the four six between now and the end of the year, right. Uh, the five fifties aren't going into production for another couple months. Mm -hmm. And then that takes another couple months to finish and ship enough on a container ship Four, and then it has to yeah, clear customers. Four sixties are yep. so you're not gonna see it's on the upper fifties, mid fifties summer, mid sixties, right? Like hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody's been so tracking monthly like I know you can go to good car, bad car and just pull monthly sales, but like they don't want the four sixty sales are increasing. <laughs> And that's I, no, because the deposits on the five fifties are off the hook. Crazy. I talked to the local dealers here; they've got like thousands. Dude, I heard eighteen months from yeah. first deliveries. If you're getting on the list right now, yeah. So I mean, you have unobtainium timelines to get to the five fifty. You have a proven platform with AAP available with yep. providers of product to build a 460 off the lot, and then you have more aftermarket, and you get the last yeah. you get the last which it the, is the, the, the last breath. breath of the V8. Yeah, that's amazing. Like it's, I told it, I posted it as this is the most difficult choice of our time. <laughs> In the off-road world, in the Toyota 4x4. But what do you do? Well, do you go for the, the tried and true 4.6 V8 with the 460 Dude, footprint and all green. the stuff that goes with it? And it looks really good. It's and you get a Nori. Gorgeous. The Nori looks Nori so good. so pretty. Or you can get a Nori in the 550, but you got to wait a year. Yeah. No. All it takes is money. And I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people who do both. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 bought, I bought a 22 Nori. Because I love it more than anything. It's amazing. I'm going to lift it at some point. And once it ages out a little bit, we'll look at a, a 550 for sure. But yeah. I wanted I wanted the last of the V8. I have the first GX because I have an 03. That's an 03, by the way. My truck's an 03. Mm -hmm. So I have an 03 and I have a 22. So I have the, the first and last oh, of the V8 GXs. I, used, and now I, have I the, always use the same picture yeah, for the green. Green. Just the, the GXs, weld. But, yeah. I don't even know what this photo is from, but like I just love. Oh, and by the way, the going language. back that render that Chris had up of the uh, of the new cruiser with the ARB, that, that's from yeah, somebody that on mod. His name is Icarus, just to throw credit where credit's due. Ah. Did you look at look at my um, look at my your friend? Are you friends with me? You can, you can look at my wall, and I have pictures of Nori. My Nori, it is this guy that I bought it from. So I got really lucky, and I will thank him, Paul, <laughs> in Ohio. Thank you so much for being who you are. You're an amazing human being. He bought a brand new 22 Nori, and he owns a, a detailing shop. He um, color corrected it. Right off the lot. Then he um, PPF'd the entire thing. Oh, my God. And then he ceramic coated the PPF. That's like 10 grand worth of detail work. Yeah. And then he tinted all the windows, too. Is the truck so stock like, otherwise? Uh, it has Voss and bronze, uh, bronze wheels with some ATs on it. No. Okay. It's stock. Oh, was that it, your, it that like your truck, truck that Chris just showed? Referencing, Dan? No. Oh. Facebook, okay. It's like, 
my my own Facebook. But you can do like it's like liquid. I always call it it's like liquid gold seaweed. Is this this? I mean, I think it's I like so good photo. looking. That's it's what insane. Nori is, right? It's the shine on it. You can see yeah, the does trees it look perfectly. like an amazing green vehicle? And it you with know, bronze wheels. Nori oh, works no. yeah, so well like, on all the other. Oh no, that's that's the that's the electric. Come on, Chris, you have one job. Oh. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> That's the RZ. Arguably, <laughs> oh, I it's a very good looking it. car for being an EV. I was shocked at how good looking it is. Of the EV. It's very good looking. Of the EV. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I was a, accosted by people. I've never been accosted by people for a car. People actually walked up and they're like, what is that? I like that. That's good. I'm like, it's, it's, a, it's an EV. And they're like, yes. Really? That's positive. It's electric. The Toyota version is heinous. The Subaru version is even weirder. It looks, it Solterra, looks good. It's like, really comfy. Subaru version is. It is. I think it's the same, right? It's like the same. It's yeah. the team. Yeah. I don't know what what is that called? A collaboration. Uh, model sharing. It's yeah. The the Subaru one is an absolute vehicle velocity. <laughs> but. I mean, it's a Subaru. You can't expect. Which you can't have that. Dude, I saw, the next one will be uglier, which will be I, I saw uh, the current <laughs> gen the WRX for the first Mojo, time in person, man. like the other day here in town. And as it went around in front of me, I was like, it's got like Hyundai taillights. Like, it looks yeah. awful. Like, yeah, it's not good. It's it's again. I didn't get that. And unfortunately, it's not that good to drive either. At, by the way, um, Atkins put in the is the Guam What's that Lexus name? dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now now I want a front license Atkins plate from the Cole. Lexus dealer on Guam. <laughs> uh, now it's funny. Yeah. Should be able to. Can I post stuff in chat? Here? No. I put a link. Um, so I'm I'm getting close on my uh, my time limit here, as I got 800 things to do before I call it a night. But Dan, what else? Uh, I mean, you've you've talked and teased a bunch of stuff coming up for GXOR and and the yeah. GX community. What uh what kind of trips do you have planned other than presumably going out to chase Rebel? So that's that's actually an interesting trip in and of itself because you can't technically do that. Really. Um. Because you're not allowed to be involved. Again, they, so I'm going to go out and my wife's truck and I, I'm going to take my truck as well or vehicle that I'm going to drive. I have to determine what vehicle I'll be driving. Mm. We'll see what's available at the time. But um, so she's going to begin at tech in California or Nevada or wherever it is. But they're going to, there's at a resort and we start there and they do tech. Yeah. They go away and I don't see her again. Like until it's over. They go dark. I don't, there's no communication, no cell phones. They, they take it all. Yep. They go do the race and you're not allowed to be in contact or nearby. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to basically chase from two days back. Mm -hmm. So they leave, we wait. The, there's some husbands of racers that I'm going with who are going to basically go and wait two days and then basically track online. We can track it online. Yep. So We'll have Starlink and we're just going to work remotely in the desert and work two days back from them and just move mm -hmm. a one day up wherever they move. We're two days back, basically. Yeah. Cool. And then um, so that's that's coming up in October. Um, between then, I am pretty much working on a car to go there in order to fix up hers, do you know, help whatever I can do. I, I am not interested in my own well-being right now. I'm here to help her. So we're packing, fixing, adjusting, doing whatever. We've got a lot of logos. We've got a lot of huge, uh, we are actually very thankful for sponsorships. We did a really cool thing, which is I'll, I'll talk about for half a second. We had everyone in GXR could donate. And if you donated, we'll put your name on the hood wrap. Mm -hmm. So we have a GXOR logo that we're mocking up and team name. And then there's going to be just a, a graffiti yeah. of signatures of everyone who donated from That's the awesome. club so that they can ride along. And then we also have our corporate, no, corporate vendor sponsors. Mm 
um, like the Fury Tire is sponsoring us because we've we actually I shockingly am very impressed and love Fury Tires off road. Um, Fury Tires, F U R Y. You would never think that, right? It's like, what do you think of when I say Fury Tire? I I've seen it before. I, I don't even know just on I the even back of, of like a Jeep or something. Are? I think. No, if you search for Fury, which is amazing because. Which is a hundred percent. They're usually yeah. on like the Brodos or Giant Show Ford trucks, oh, like their specialty oh, tire. Thirty-seven yeah. by so like sixteen the most, and a half. Most old tires, like a twenty-four inch wheel MT. Yeah. Oh. So they're like crazy giant show truck tires, but they're um, rough. They're Country Hunter MT and RT. I'm looking at it right now. And that MT2 is new, so that just who, came out. So I don't know anything about that. Who owns that Fury? Country Hunter RT right there? That thing is insane. It's it's great. Like I have those are the 37 1250s I've got and she's getting. She has 1350s now, the same tire. We have run all over the place through jagged rocks. They the sidewalls hold up. They they grip wet mud whatever. Hmm. And those are RTs. Who owns And uh, I run a lot of tires, but do you know who owns Fury? Or are they just like, I have no earthly idea. Let's see. Because usually like the small I know they're amazing share like, car cases. I was shocked because I heard that they were going to try and do like off road, right? Mm-hmm. And I I knew about Fury from like if you go into SEMA, every single yeah. Ford truck that was like 17 feet tall that had is... Fury yep. tires on them, right? But then I, I was like taught they're based in Texas. And I was working in Texas and I, I ran into some shops there that were like running these tires. And I was like, what? And then I got a set and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh. Because because I was running like out the, when I went to 35s to 37s, I was like, what 37 do I want to run? I kind of want to be different because I'm different, whatever. And um I found out, I, I was like, oh, you know what? I wrote, what about those? Mm-hmm. So I, I called and got a set and uh, put them on. And I'm like, these are the... Ross, I, I they're think expensive. they're just them. They're awesome. Yeah. And then, so Fury is one of our big ones. I think so, too. I I mean, if you Google Google Google, like, um, most of the stuff that comes up is SEMA I'm articles. Pretty, pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It looks like they're made yeah. in either Vietnam or China or korea depending on which yeah but but you know plug that i mean i'm happy to plug that one because i I actually have practical on the ground experience with something that works and along with some of the others because we accepted sponsorships from people that we know but also the the vendor sponsorships were people that we had stuff from Mm -hmm. so like the midgard um the midgard uh, overland stuff in texas they're also in texas they make those um I don't know if anybody had them, but the LFD bars, they're like load bars that go onto the stock roof rack mounts, yep. but they're just bars. So you don't have to have the rails yep. and they hold like a massive amount of weight. So we, weight. we use those in our move. Um, What's the name of the company? Storage box. Midgard. I can, Mid- Mid- I can. Yeah, because Mid- LFD is like the, the name big name for the. Midgard. Midgard, Ad- yeah. Midgard Adventure Equipment. I think their uh, URL is MidgardAdventure.com. They have like roof racks and load bars and all sorts of cool accessories for your truck. Um, and then like recovery gear, like tree yoke mm-hmm. off-road. They, they supplied a lot of the gear there. Um, so we put them up on the thing. Rad rubber because the liners we love. Mm-hmm. Like. Eddie's a cool guy, and I've always had rad rubber stuff on my trucks. Um, <laughs> and then we had I Hate Mud, Woody um, kicked in because yep. we created the GXOR section on I Hate Mud, which is also unique. It's huge, I would say. Too. It's, well, that, like, it's huge. I'm gonna pull it gives me even more quick. confidence to find an old four seventy. Yeah, it's insane. Because it, that, that's like. I so I have an LX four seventy. I was the hundred series, but like knowing that I have that as a resource, I was, there was no hesitation in pulling the trigger on that. Yeah, Go, going into the GXs, I was like, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, oh three oh four. If you're like, if you want like old, if you're an old school, t- and this is like a great recommendation for old school Land Cruiser people. Oh three oh four GXs. 
They have a metallic, they have the aluminum intake, so it's not plastic, so you don't feel like you're gonna break it. Um, it's simple, there's less computers, it's not hard to diagnose, it's easy to maintain, you can do most of the work yourself, no, nothing real complex about it. Yep. It's, yeah, that's awesome. It's like super easy entry level sort of GX. And it's a V8, it's a V8, V8 four runner underneath, so it's got uh, yeah. endless resources. <laughs> or you can buy a 2014 GX 460 and add MTS and crawl control for 200 bucks. You said 2016. Those are way more expensive. <laughs> How do I do that? I think my computer just froze. That you was. Can about, 20, I, you can do 2014. To be honest, home. I am one text message short away from being a 460 owner. The guy, I I went on a trip and the guy sold the truck. He was like, "I'm going on a trip." I was going on a trip. I was like, "Cool." I'll, I'll hit, hit you up when we both get back. And when I got back, he's like, oh, I took money. Somebody's coming to buy it. And I was like, God, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that, that money spent, Ross. The There's always the next kids. one. Up. No, my, uh, my wife got her GX in a similar fashion, but she was the one that showed up first. So <laughs> she was, because she bought it in, um, so she's from Canada, so... When she was living in Canada before we met, she bought her GX and was looking at, she was actually looking at a 100, like at, at the site of the 100 and got word that an alert on the app in Canada called Kijiji that had a yeah. GX alert. And she was like, I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. And like bolted and went and like told the guys like, you will take my money now and you will give, he's like, I need the car for another week. I just put it up to see if somebody would be interested. Yeah. <laughs> too bad it's mine <laughs> but that's that's ultimately like that her getting into a gx before we ever met and everything is like how we met like mm -hmm. we met for through off-road which is kind of cool because she was wheeling up in canada and doing her thing with gx's and joined gxr and and friendships and all that good stuff so it's like awesome that like a portion of my life is like around mm -hmm. all this thing yeah it's pretty wild yeah it's a it's a unique story and it's fucking awesome it's cool. I mean, we don't hear stories like that, and, and we hear a lot of stories, you know. Feel sure. good stuff. You guys already did all this stuff on the good stuff we did, right? No, I don't. You know I about that about stuff, that. the donations and this, the rescues and all that. We um, shit. We had a member whose wife died of cancer, God. and he had to sell his truck to pay for her medical treatments. So they had two young kids and. She made him promise to get like a GX and take the kids out on the adventures. They couldn't go on together. So this was back when we, we didn't even have that many members then. I want to say we only had like ten or 15,000. Mm -hmm. We donated enough money amongst ourselves to buy a GX and give it to the guy. That's awesome. So we delivered it to his house. I had I, There was a, a member who was a police officer who was able to come and get the car from the guy that owned it, that we bought it from. He helped orchestrate and we delivered it to him. And then we had all the vendors start pitching in to help him modify it. So we ended up like, Holy crap. it was already lifted, but we added like, he got a long range tank. That's and now it's like all tricked out. He posts his kids in the, in the group as they get older. Um, that's like one. And then we had like a firefighter in Denver who, female firefighter in Denver who had a double mastectomy and took the firefighter yeah. um, like trial. I don't know what that's called. Uh, the firefighter test. What? We have to climb the, yeah. She did that with still like post post op, like oh still God. wounded, and she passed. But she was like also she was trying to get do stuff with her kids. But and so we we had Toy Tech, um, before Doug sold it to DPI. But it was Toy Tech that um they they're like oh bring it in for a lift. Yep. And they had it, and they were like oh we need it for you know we're busy we're backed up and we're waiting on some parts so it's okay if you leave it for a couple of days. And then we had like vendors like DeMello kicked in with a bumper and mm -hmm. we had everybody donate stuff and yeah. we helped and we built the whole thing out and they like did a, did Dude, like awesome. a, tr a trick my ride sort of reveal on, yeah. uh, I think it's on YouTube still. Is somebody um, writing these, somebody's got to write these stories up for like that new OVR magazine or something. These are great. Yeah. We do. We try to do that often. Like the, that, we reached out this time to for the, the the rebel rally, which I think was cool because we wanted to have everybody the opportunity to be involved with it. Mm -hmm. But we're due. Like we've grown. We, we're due for something. I want to do something cool. Uh, we need to do more of that philanthropic helping people, which is kind of the vibe of it. It's like we don't put up with 
um, we don't put up with trolls and people that want to be entertained on the internet and be rude to folks. Like if you're not there yeah. to help yourself and others, then you can just find another group and that's okay. Yeah. Too sure. And I'm okay with that. Well, I know it's a long way. And I'd rather have. No, it's a long ways out, but if we're like, going to do philanthropy stuff, then uh, then let's get a Northeast GXOR Toys for Tots thing going this winter. We do. Around Christmas. The, we have one of the largest Toys for Tots uh, donations in California. <laughs> what about in the Northeast? Um, probably not. I'm, probably, I don't want to I'm willing to head it up. It's cold. It's cold up there. It, it is cold, but I'm here. So. But if we do Toys for Tots is a big deal. We, we it's it's meet Good. you do a meetup, Good. Toys for Tots, you know all that stuff. So yeah. I think it's a great idea, and you should. And everybody that's watching this has a chapter. You should always get involved with chapters. That's why we started the chapters to begin with. We have over seventy five chapters in every state, and some of them have additional chapters within states for cities like Houston's huge, um, etc. So you, like check it out, find your local chapter, and then there's people like there's people everywhere wow there's 1200 gxr members in georgia crazy there's 2000 there's over 2000 in socal yeah yeah it's become a big community and it's, it's yeah so yeah. anywhere you are you can find someone and you don't have to have a gx like yep. we wheel with everybody that's the whole point so just go have fun yep we're all <laughs> so, for the same reason and, and if you're serious about toyota you gotta be serious about toyota <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great if you're serious about your truck you gotta be really serious i think about i found seriously you are, all in. you are all in yeah yeah uh, oh i was i was browsing very saddest. cheap uh why gx we, listings but then i found sad? this thing it is it is uh, it is sad oh oh 230,000 miles, 1998. That, uh, so it's got. Is that deliberate or. That, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Age. Either it's, needs a fuse or really. Or it's really slammed. Good wheel. What? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's dead. That's dead globes or something. Yeah. I think, I think it's outstanding. Uh, steering wheel coverage always precise. scare me. Can't okay, right. Look at that. No CIG build. Okay, guys. I uh, yeah. unfortunately have to do well. Fortunately and unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to say fortunately because I'm tired. <laughs> like I need you projects for my <laughs> MBA. So yeah, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm definitely tired. tired yeah. I'll, I'll you, wrap up uh, the show real fast thank before Ross runs yeah, away. That's awesome. So you can rate review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. We like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow Dan at GX Offroad on Instagram, and it's at GXOR on Facebook or GXOR.org. For just internet, <laughs> uh, you, yeah, GXOR, just GXOR, yep. and participate so in shenanigans can, on uh, on the forums and mud. You can read Ross's <laughs> card reviews on and Instagram and all the other places. Anything in months, uh, yeah. And uh, Ross has like no, not like the one with friends. And I'm not really dead. We did it. We did a show. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm.